Hello and welcome. My name is Martin and in this video I'm going to check if Ableton fixed the bugs from Ableton 10 and Ableton 11 in their new version Ableton 12. Spoiler alert, the bugs are still there and in this video I'm showing you four of my favorite Ableton Live bugs. The first bug is about Ableton's drum rack. You have different sample slots and in these sample slots you can also activate a filter and do different things with the filter. But sometimes, if you activate the filter, the signal is just muted. As you can see, the moment I activate the filter, the signal is muted. And it doesn't matter what kind of slope I select or what frequency I select, the sample pad is just dead. The next bug is a very strange behavior that happens when you move around a track with the mouse. Let's say I have MIDI channel 2 and I drag it to the last position. Then immediately on the push console all the red pads start to light up. Usually that only happens when you start or trigger the um, record arm mode. You can do this by either pressing and holding a button here on the push or using the mouse. But in this case the whole row is red and there's no way to deactivate this. I will demonstrate it again by moving the first drum rack track to a new position. See what happens. Boom! The whole row goes red and there's no way to deactivate this. Then there is a strange bug regarding the preset management of Ableton. Let's load a third-party plugin like Valhalla Delay and change some settings. We change the delay speed to an eighth note and now I right click the plugin and select save as standard configuration. Now I'm getting a warning message because there's already a preset and I overwrite it. And so when I now delete this one and open new instance it should technically load with the settings. Unfortunately it doesn't. It's still back to milliseconds and yeah this one. This is very strange uh, and rather random. Of course it's possible that this has to do with the third-party plugin but this works in other DAWs that I've been working with so I'm suspecting that the blame is to put on Ableton in this case. Then there's something else which is very odd with the plugins. I'm not sure if it's really a bug or just a very bad design choice. You can right click and group any plugin that you have, which is very convenient because then you can assign the parameters to the macro knobs. This is very useful to me because I made a lot of presets for my effects, so I can just double click one of them and then I have an effect patch with all my settings and I can tweak the parameters that I like. What's very strange now is that once you have mapped a parameter to this rack, you can of course still change it here on the graphical user interface. But as you can see, it doesn't change the value in... Oh, now we're getting some feedback overload. But it doesn't change the value here on the group. So now we have feedback 0 on the actual plugin, but it still says 69 here. And when I now move this one, I have an immediate parameter jump. So there is an inconsistency between the graphical user interface and this one. This is something that also works better in other DAWs and I don't understand why Ableton is not able to make a consistent user experience for the racks and also the plugins. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.